ever since I discovered I could get FSR4 working on my laptop's AMD 780Mi GPU, I've been obsessed with the project's development. It's still in its early stages, which is why it seems to improve every single day. Today, I noticed the Mazer driver was updated to version 25.3, so I decided to give it another go with a different game. This time, I chose Cyberpunk 2077, which just received a major update to version 2.3 that includes official FSR4 support, according to the internet. However, I learned that their FSR4 implementation is performing worse than the OptiScaler method. As for the version 2.3 or 2.30, as you can see, the frame timing is a mess. So I decided to stick with the older 2.2 version for today's test. I don't think the differences between these two versions will matter much for this video, though. For those who don't know yet, if you're using an RDNA 3 GPU, which isn't supposed to officially support FSR4, you can still get it working. Here's what you need. First, you must run Linux on your PC. Any distro will do, so don't worry about that. Second, you need to install the latest Mesa driver, but not the stable 25.1 version. You'll want the bleeding edge version, 25.2 or later, because only these drivers can emulate FP8 on older GPUs that lack the necessary hardware. Check out my last video for a guide on installing the bleeding edge driver without messing up your system. Third, You'll need to use OptiScaler to switch the in-game upscaler to FSR4. I won't go over all the details again, so let's jump into the game and see how it performs. First, let's check how the older version of FSR performs in Cyberpunk 2077. In Dogtown, the most GPU-intensive area of the game, I'm getting mid-30s FPS using the Steam Deck preset, with FSR 2.1 in quality mode at 1080p. Previously, FSR 2.1 was the better upscaler in this game, because for some reason, FSR 3 looks much worse. The image quality here is decent, though there's some noticeable shimmering on trees and cars. Performance-wise, it's totally playable with a controller. A console-like experience, so no complaints there. If we switch to FSR 3, the image quality drops significantly. There's a lot more shimmering, which becomes distracting, and we even lose a couple of FPS. So, definitely avoid FSR 3 in this game. Now, let's activate OptiScaler and switch to FSR 4. The image quality gets an instant boost. We lose about 3 or 4 FPS in quality mode, but look at the trees and cars. The shimmering is completely gone. The game looks amazing, and we're still hitting at least 30 FPS in the most demanding area. During regular gameplay, you'll likely see higher FPS, making it very playable with a controller. Next, let's try performance mode at 50% rendering, which is 540p upscaled to 1080p. Honestly, unless I'm staring closely at my laptop's screen, I can barely tell the difference between this and quality mode, especially during gameplay. The image remains clean with no visible shimmering. There might be a slight sharpness difference, but it's not a big deal. The FPS jumps from 31 to about 38, a roughly 20% performance boost. Now let's test ultra performance mode, upscaling from 360p to 1080p. I'm not sure how this will look on YouTube with compression, but in person it's way better than I expected. The image is still clean but a bit too soft for my taste. So I bumped the sharpness slider in the settings to 0.5, and now it feels just right. It's hard to believe this is upscaled from 360p. I can see why people are so impressed with Nvidia's DLSS 4, which is supposedly even better than FSR 4. There's some slight shimmering if you look closely but it's nothing like what we saw with FSR 3. Looking at the FPS, we're now in the low 40s in Dogtown, and in less demanding areas, it's a lot closer to 50 FPS. This is with the Steam Deck preset, which uses mostly medium to high graphic settings and looks much better than the low preset. This is exciting because I've recently seen videos comparing Cyberpunk 2077 on PC handhelds and the Nintendo Switch 2. Thanks to DLSS, the Switch 2 always wins in image quality comparisons. But now that we can get FSR 4 working on the Radeon 780M iGPU, found in many PC handhelds, we might reach a different conclusion for this game. 
Of course, my laptop's iGPU can draw more power than those in handhelds, but I think the performance will still be solid, since the development is still in its early stages. We could see even better results in the near future. I don't own an expensive PC handheld or a Switch 2, so if any of you have those devices, please test this out and let us know how it performs. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised that gaming at 360p in 2025 is this good. If you have a laptop or handheld with an AMD iGPU, it's definitely worth trying FSR 4. Sure, it requires some tinkering, but once it's set up, the improvement is impressive. This is another reason I'm loving Linux gaming right now. Lately, we've seen awesome developments, like emulating ray tracing on older AMD GPUs to run unsupported games, the Linux implementation of lossless scaling frame gen, and now FSR 4 on unsupported hardware. The only disappointment is that the Steam Deck's GPU, being a generation older than the Radeon 780M, might not support FSR 4 at all. If I ever get the budget for a gaming handheld, this will be a key factor in deciding whether to go for a Steam Deck or something else. Bear in mind that Cyberpunk 2077 remains one of the most demanding games today, despite being released years ago. For an integrated GPU to run it at all is already an achievement, and achieving decent image quality while maintaining a playable frame rate with a last generation iGPU is almost too good to be true. I own a more powerful desktop that can handle higher resolutions and frame rates. But if all I have is this laptop, I'd be happy gaming on it with these graphics. Previously, with FSR 2.1 or XESS, the game wasn't too bad. However, FSR 4 is a significant improvement for me in terms of image quality. I know this is an unpopular opinion, especially among PC gamers, but I believe 30 FPS is playable for a single player game particularly with a controller, and 1080p is more than enough to enjoy the graphics. Over the past five or six years, I've been a happy owner of a Nintendo Switch, and many games on that platform delivered only 720p visuals, yet I still loved them. People can easily become intolerant of low-end gaming after watching YouTube videos or reading Reddit posts claiming that 1440p at 60fps is the minimum in 2025 to enjoy any game. However, I think being a happy gamer is incredibly easy today. Just be grateful for every technological improvement. If you believe higher graphical fidelity is crucial to a game, just remember when you were a kid and loved playing games at 20 frames per second and 360p. Today, thanks to FSR 4, I am enjoying 360p again. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.